I was recently looking around Google Maps and I noticed these weird long dark strips in southern Russia and northern Kazakhstan. And immediately I wondered what they were. I originally thought that they were a protected area and the surrounding terrain had just been deforested for farmland, but these strips are actually natural pine forests. These are known as Russia's ribbon or tape forests. Stretching over 200 miles, or around 400 kilometers at the longest. If we zoom in, it is crazy seeing the cutoff between dense pine forest and fields and farmlands. And so today's video, we are going to talk about how these strange ribbon forests formed and some interesting history about them. The story of how these ribbon forests formed starts at the last glacial maximum around 26,000 to 20,000 years ago. So during this time, large glaciers formed in the Altai Mountains, which are the mountains directly southeast from the ribbon forests. These large glaciers in this area created a large glacial dam and blocked off the Chuya River, and this created large and deep lakes in the modern-day Kurai Basin and Chuya Basin here. However, after the last glacial period, as the Earth was starting to warm back up, this large glacial dam failed, leaving these two large and deep lakes to rapidly rush out of the canyon. And as these huge amounts of water were flooding out of these basins, they flowed down where the Chuya River goes today, and then north to the Katoon River, and farther north into where the Ob River forms. And this river, as you can see, flows right around where our ribbon forests are. And to truly understand how catastrophic this flood was, it was around 750 meters tall, or around 2,500 feet of water rushing into this area. So as you can imagine, this river picked up a lot of sediment from the mountains and the surrounding foothills and deposited a lot of sand and gravel into this flat region where the ribbon forest formed. Today, you can actually see how much sediment this flood deposited in these giant terraces here. These terraces were formed by this huge flood depositing all of this sediment. Here's another example. As you can see by the Katoon River, there are these huge terraces of sediment on the side. So now we have a lot of sandy deposits in this region. But how did it get formed into the straight features that we see today? Well, again, it was also from the immense amount of water in this region. So here is the Kure Basin where all of the water originally flooded out of, and you can see that on a much smaller scale, it formed ripples in the sandy surface below. So as you can imagine, with this almost 2,500 foot tall flood, it would create giant ripples in this floodplain. And that is what we see today. Here is a topographic map where you can see the ripples in this landscape. I especially find this curve in the pine forest interesting because it just proves that these are ripples in the landscape. If we go to the previous photo of these small scale ripples, as you can see there are these curved edges. And so I just think it's very interesting how you can see these on two different scales. Now one thing I want to touch on before we continue is where all of this flood water went. So once this flood water went into this area, it flowed farther north along the Ob River and eventually flowed into this massive glacial lake named Mansi Lake or the West Siberian Glacial Lake, but that's way more of a boring name. And for reference, here is where the flood started. And so once this flood reached this lake, as you can probably see on the map, it continued further south into the Aral Sea and then the Caspian Sea and even further into the Black Sea. So this flood water really took a journey. Just based off this rough measurement that I've just done, it traveled around 3,800 miles, or around 6,100 kilometers. But now let's get back to our ribbon forests. So now that we have all this sandy soil that is within these ripples, we need a tree that thrives in sandy soil. And that tree is the Scots pine, which primarily grows in poorer sandy soil. And so as you can imagine, this tree quickly spread in an area with a lot of sandy soils. It is also important to mention that this Scots pine forest also has a lot of birch trees as well. It really just depends on the area. As you can see here, there's kind of a sharp contrast between where the Scots pine grows and where the birch grows. So now that we know the geology of this area, let's go over the geography of this area and the recent history. So as you can see on a satellite map, there are primarily four bands 
of these pine forests. And these forests are all named after the primary river that runs through the middle of them. So the longest one is named Barnalka, after the Barnalka River, which flows through most of the strip. The second one is named Kasmala, also after the river in the area. The third one is named Kalunda, and actually starts north of it, and then flows through the middle of it. And the final one is named Burla, again after the main river, which flows through it. These forests have also, unfortunately, experienced some ecological damage. First off, as you can imagine, these forests have been deforested because these are really the only forests that are readily available to some of these western towns. Also, these forests have experienced pretty devastating wildfires. One of these forest fires occurred in 1997 to 1999 and burned around 70,000 hectares of this forest. Luckily, the World Wildlife Fund stepped in to help reforest the areas. Another forest fire is said to have started in the southwestern region of these ribbon forests, which after looking on this map might be here, although I wasn't really able to find any sources confirming whether it was actually this region or if this region was deforested or something. But luckily today, these forests have some protections in place to help prevent them being destroyed and prevent more deforestation happening. And so I just find the story of these ribbon forests to be very interesting. Because at first glance, you might just think they are some weird nature preserves and deforestation happened around them. At least that's what I originally thought. But if you look deeper, you will find a very interesting history in both geology and geography. But that is going to be all for today's video. If you learned something new, please subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.